Nice. Hello, my friend. Let's talk about this guy, Crafter by Sound Theory. The same guys that are behind Goldfoss, which you probably heard of, and I actually made a video on Goldfoss years ago. And this is their second baby that came out just a few months ago. I'm actually late to the party, but like they say, better late than never. So what is Crafter? Crafter is a saturation loudness enhancer. It has saturation, it has multiband saturation, and also clipping, which is quite interesting. It's a great tool for the mix bus for instrument buses, which is where I like to use it a lot. And it's also a great loudness tool for mastering. This plugin has been crafted to increase loudness, density, tone, by preserving the integrity of the dynamics of the signal. So you can use this tool as a loudness enhancer, and also as a saturation plugin. And just to be fully transparent, this video is sponsored by Sound Theory. And the reason is very simple. Sound Theory is running a sale at the moment that ends on December 9th. So you'll get 40% off Goldfoss and 30% off Crafter. I'm gonna leave the link down below. And again, the sale ends on December 9th, 2024. Let's jump right in and look at what we get with Crafter. So if we take a look at Crafter, as you can tell, it's a very nice GUI and the plugin itself is very easy to work with, but there's some stuff you need to know about. First, uh, we actually can change the color scheme of the plugin. If we click on the logo on top, there's that small uh, triangle. I'm gonna click on it and there you go. I have access to different uh, color scheme, uh, but I'm gonna keep it to the default one that is dark it looks pretty good so let's keep it this way um, now for the most part for most of the parameters we have in crafter uh, these are going to be related to the saturation part of the plugin because like I said this plugin comes uh, with two different types of processing okay there's the saturation side and there's the clipping side okay so the saturation side is mainly what we uh, we see for the most part inside crafter so there's the amount of drive level that we can um, bring up or down okay and as you can hear okay i'm going to bring the level up of this uh, drum groove add a bit of drive and as as you can hear it adds also more loudness and volume to the signal which is normal but if i want to know exactly what crafter is adding to my signal um, it's going to be hard because, you know, I'm going to, probably going to be deceived by the amount of loudness it adds, okay? So, of course, it's going to sound better because it sounds louder. So, what I can do here is to click on match. That will level match my processed signal with the original dry signal. So, this way I can focus on what Crafter adds to the signal as far as the saturation goes without being distracted with the extra amount of loudness I'm going to get, okay? Now that everything is level matched way easier to make the right decisions. Once I'm done, I deactivate it and I just uh, move forward with my mix and I make sure it's not active, especially when I bounce my mix, okay? So let's leave it on for now for the purpose of this video to focus on what I'm gaining by using Crafter. Uh, so first, the gain uh, knob right here. I'm gonna add a bit more gain. All right, okay. Now, to balance this up, Look on top, there is that huge red triangle, and this is part of the, the nice features we have here in Crafter. Okay, single, multi, and dry. Basically, if I bring it to single, this is gonna use the, um, um, the full range, single band processor to apply saturation. If I bring it to multi, now Crafter acts as a multi-band saturator using three bands of frequencies, the lows, the mids, and the highs, okay? And on top, uh, we can see the crossover points of those bands of frequencies. Uh, by default, it's good, I think it goes up to 350 hertz, uh, 3500 hertz, uh, which are the two crossover points uh, to, to separate the low and mid range and the mid and high range, okay? Uh, you can change that around like I did earlier. You can also solo these bands. Let's solo the low band of frequencies right here. And from this point, I can tweak that around. Let's say I just want to focus on the kick. I think that will do it. And I can, I can add 
some saturation. And look what this is going to sound like. This is, if I overdo it, of course, I can keep it maybe cleaner by making sure I don't get lots of saturation while I'm increasing drive. So drive and the low, mid, high shift, they all work together, okay? So I can actually keep my drive to zero and just, you know, use the low shift, mid shift and high shift to add some saturation. What I like to do though is to first start by increasing a bit of drive and then you know fine-tune with the uh, the multiband portion of the plugin. Okay I'm gonna bring it back to single band and as you can see there is the transfer curve right here okay which looks a lot like you know a threshold curve found on a compressor okay if we take a look at the offset and knee this will affect the actual transfer curve the knee will smooth up the saturation point of the curve a bit like we have on a compressor with the hard and soft knee same thing and the offset is going to start saturation sooner Okay, so it's going to offset the start of the saturation. So this way you can add more saturation without adding more drive to the signal because you're going to affect more of the signal by adding more offset. So all the quieter parts are going to get saturation, basically, you know, depending on the level you set up the offset to. So that can be practical. So if I get back to my triangle on top, I can also blend the single band processor with the multiband processor, which is quite nice, but also with the dry signal. I can bring that back to fully dry or go between dry and multiband processor or between dry and single band processor or, you know, the best of all worlds. So it makes the saturation processing so flexible and like very interesting to work with. Now look, let's look at the meters we have at the bottom. At the bottom we have the input meters. Uh, the white meter is the uh, represents the single band processor. Uh, if I add a bit more drive, now you will see uh, at some point when we'll get lots of saturation, you will see the color change to a very bright white. And same for all the other bands. Uh, if we go back and look at uh, the, um, the different tones we have on the meters, uh, the first part of the meter where we have a lighter tone, uh, this will represent the amount of uh, RMS level, okay, the average level of the signal. And the darker side of the, um, uh, the meter is the peak level, okay? And same for the multiband meters. So the one in orange, again, goes with the low shift, the low band frequencies, the uh, mid shift will be the blue and yellow for the high shift. And same thing applies. So if I add a bit more uh, mid shift at some point, there you go, I have more saturation added to this band of frequencies and you can actually see it on the meter itself with this very bright white color at the end of the meter. We can also see the amount of saturation going on inside the graphic analyzer, uh, just inside the, uh, the transfer curve. So if I add some low shift or reduce the amount of low shift, I'm gonna see the difference inside the graphic right here. Okay, so let's tweak around with this drum groove. Let's see what we can get. Nice. Way more in your face. I love it. And also the, the liveness I get out of the drums is just stunning. I don't know if you heard that, but the sustain out of that snare, kind of that roomy sound that I get, I just love it. And even if I bring down the amount of drive, let's, you know, let's make it a bit more subtle. I 
love it. You really don't need to overdo it for it to sound good and to add way more density, character, and vibe uh, to your signal, okay? Okay, let's listen to this one in the context of the music. Nice. Add a bit more drive. Oh, this is so cool, love it. Okay, now I have Crafter straight on my drum bus, okay? Um, I already love the level of the drum bus even before I added Crafter. So what I can do since I have Match activated, uh, if I remove Match, now you know the level is gonna be way louder. Which is gonna be way too loud for my track. So what I can do, I can readjust the output gain with the gain level, and this will bring up or down the output gain of the plugin. But what I'm gonna do instead is this. I'm gonna click on match. It's gonna match it again, like I said, to the uh, unprocessed signal. And what I can do, I can just click on apply. And that's it. Now it's gonna readjust the ceiling and the output level of the plugin to the same loudness level. Well, that's perfect, okay? So this is in a situation where I use Crafter on a, an instrument bus where I'm already satisfied with the amount of level this bus has, okay? So that can be very, very useful. I'm gonna add Crafter on the full mix, and this time around, I'm gonna activate Clip, okay? Which is gonna add some soft clipping uh, to the signal. Okay, now I can adjust the amount of ceiling, the ceiling point by dragging up or down this red zone. Okay, this is going to be my ceiling point. I can also adjust that with the ceiling, um, the ceiling values that I have at the bottom right of the plugin. Now, note something like clipping. When we talk about clipping, um, at some point, clipping will add also saturation, which is a different saturation than what we have inside the plugin. So it's kind of a second stage of saturation distortion. So I'm always careful when working with a clipper, especially on a full mix. I wanna to try to keep things um, more controllable, I guess, you know, or more uh, subtle, okay, when it comes to uh, clipping. I don't wanna end up with too much saturation on top of what I already have inside Crafter. Now, since we're talking about saturation and clipping, Note that Crafter has unique oversampling and DSP algorithms to minimize aliasing and intermodular distortion, okay? And this adds a lot to the quality of this plugin, in my opinion. So the CFR meter we have right here is the amount of crest factor, which is basically the, uh, the difference between the loudness level with the peak level. So in this case, it will quantify the difference in the crest factor of the fully processed signal with the unprocessed signal, which according to the manual is similar to gain reduction, basically. So this is a good meter to pay attention to, especially if you're mastering with this plugin. All right, so let's bring back our mix and tweak things around. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the low band frequencies pretty clean, okay? Way more powerful. Love that. Adds a bit more clarity also. Very nice vibe. Okay, something I wanna point out also. Uh, the output gain when clip is active, okay? Very important to uh, to understand that this will not 
um, add or reduce the amount of output level after clipping, okay? It's gonna do it before clipping. So when clipping is off, it's gonna be the output level of the plugin. When I activate clipping, the stage of level, of output level, is gonna be just before hitting the clipper, okay? Okay, also, if I use and I blend uh, the dry signal with my multiband processor, Same thing, even if I put it fully dry for that matter, it's still gonna clip, okay? So when I blend with the dry signal, this doesn't mean that it's affecting the clipper, okay? It's only affecting the saturation side of the plugin, okay? Important to note. Okay, now this time around with this mix, uh, I'm not gonna activate match, so you can hear the difference in loudness without and with Crafter. Okay, if I match it. Again, I love it. I love it. I honestly love this plugin. Honestly, it's not because this is a sponsored video. Actually, you know, this is for you to decide. But as far as I'm concerned, I started to work with this plugin not too long ago, and I'm not gonna stop now. I'm telling you right now. It's a great combination of saturation and clipping. And I like to use Crafter, especially when mastering, uh, just because of the quality of the clipper, the quality of the saturation I get. It enhanced the loudness in a very transparent way by keeping the dynamics and the punch out of my mix, which is something a bit more challenging, especially when aiming for a loud master, which is not something that I'm gonna aim a lot for, to be honest, but when I need to, especially when I'm mastering an EDM production, for example, I don't mind bringing a master loud as long as it sounds punchy and clean at the same time okay and by using crafter it helps a lot a lot for that matter honestly so there you go this is crafter links are down below don't forget that there's a sale going on until december 9th if you want to save a 30 percent off crafter and also 40 percent off goldfoss which is another amazing plugin from sound theory let me know what you think leave your comments down below take care and see you soon